How good the Lord is. Blessings to each of you. Indeed, we're blessed once again to have this opportunity to share the word of God with you in our virtual Bible study. Pastor and I, we're going to share this word um, this evening together. So delighted to have Pastor uh, here with me to share in the teaching of God's word tonight. I would like to ask you, if you will, at this time, if you would bow your heads as Pastor Kennedy leads us in a word of prayer. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the wonder of this moment, for the sanctity of your word. We pray now that you'll speak to us, speak through us with clarity to your people, to the end of your pleasure, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, I want you to go with us again to 2 Corinthians chapter number 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 8. We looked at verses 1 and 5 in last week's study. This evening, I want to look at verse 2 and verse 3. We're going to look at verse 2 and verse 3. So let me read that to you as we hear the word of God speak to us. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse number 2 says, That in a great ordeal of affliction... Their abundance of joy and their deep poverty overflowed in the wealth of their liberality. Mm -hmm. For I testify that according to their ability and beyond their ability, they gave of their own accord. I want to read that one Mm -hmm. more time. Verse two says that in a great ordeal of affliction, Mm -hmm. their abundance of joy and their deep poverty overflowed in the wealth of their liberality. For I testify that according to their ability and beyond their ability, they gave of their own accord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be unto our God. We're talking again about the stewardship of giving. This is the part two of this particular series of studies. Pastor Kennedy and I, we have been very intentional about teaching and preaching specifically this month about stewardship. In fact, rather in October about stewardship. And we're continuing that on uh, through the month of November for the next few weeks. What we what I want to what I want to do first is before Pastor and I get into verse two and three, it's just kind of Recap what's going on in the text so you have some level of context as to what is happening. It's the Apostle Paul who is who is writing and speaking to the Corinthian church. The Corinthians, they had agreed to participate in this work that was going to take place in the mother church, Jerusalem with the poor saints. But word uh, was being spoken in the Corinthian church among the Corinthian believers that the Apostle Paul was perhaps taking money and not handling money right, even suggesting misappropriation of funds. Mm -hmm. But the Apostle Paul responds to these erroneous accusations, Mm -hmm. but he responds definitively, (coughs) definitively, but he also responds with the heart of pastoral love. Mm -hmm. And what he does is he corrects the wrong perspective of what was being said and what he does he uses particularly in the first five verses he uses the example of the Macedonian churches those churches that were in this Macedonian province those churches were in Berea Thessalonica Philippi he uses what they have done and how they have operated by the grace of God, under the auspices of the grace of God, as a model for the Corinthian church to look at and to follow. He does this so that they can learn from them and how they can operate under grace. So in verse 1 and verse 5, he talks about how the grace of God has been at work in the Macedonian churches. goes to verse 5, and he says, because of that grace, they gave of themselves to the Lord first, And then unto them what what he simply is saying is that because of grace, they understood Mm. that they had to make sure their lives were submitted to the Lord Jesus Christ. And how does that matter to us when it relates Mm. to financial stewardship before we can ever give anything financially to the Lord? We must give 
of ourselves, yeah. which means we have to relinquish any idea that we own ourselves, mm. but God is owner and we are stewards. Mm. So thus, if anything is going to happen in our lives financially from a stewardship perspective, we must first give of ourselves mm. unto the Lord. Now, once they gave themselves <coughs> to the Lord, once they surrendered mm. their lives to the Lord, found themselves in a right relationship, in a rich, righteous relationship, it, it led to the kind of stewardship mm. that would be evident yeah. in a life that is graced by God. Mm. And Pastor, this yes. is where I want you to enter this conversation yeah. with me. They had the grace of God in their life. Yeah, yeah. But in verse two and verse three, mm. how do we deal with the fact of giving mm. when life is turned upside down? Mm. Because if you look at verse two and verse three, yeah. clearly yeah. they were in what would be a societal perspective yeah. Yeah. of being upside down. Yeah. They, they, they are struggling. They're yeah. under pressure. Yeah. But how do, how do you get to the point where you can be under pressure, mm. not have much resources, and I want you to just explain yeah, this in the most yeah, practical yeah. way, yet their attitude mm. and their actions yeah. overflowed with an abundance of love. Yeah. Pastor, grace is amazing. It is, it and is. And when we look at it, Pastor, they were not under the dictates of their external circumstances. Right. They were under the dominion of God. Okay. We see the effects of grace. You know, more often than not, we try to define grace. And of course, we spend mm -hmm. a lifetime trying to define. It's like trying to define the wind. How do you define the wind? Well, for the most part, we see the effects of the wind. Yeah. We see the effects of grace operative, interspersed and interpenetrating their lives. Mm -hmm. One of the things that dawned on me was, I think we forget that grace, Pastor, is costly. Mm -hmm. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, it's not cheap. Grace is costly. Grace is quite demanding. And what we do see about grace, as grace is operative in the life of the Macedonians, we see, Pastor, here it is, grace enlightens the consciousness. Mm -hmm. Grace empowers the contribution because grace expands capacity. Yeah. And hence, it it is as if we wouldn't ask these people to give because yeah. they're in deep poverty. But here's what grace literally zooms in on. The abundance of joy that they have in relationship with the Lord. And we know it's relational because they give themselves yeah. dedicatorily to the Lord. That's the first offering. Yeah. And then here's what Paul says. That's the first offering. Here's the second offering. They Give themselves to me also. Yeah. So they didn't just give themselves to the Lord. They gave themselves to the leader. Yeah. And as a result, pastor, they gave an offering to the saints in Jerusalem. So, so pastor, if there's another thing that we can say, grace does this in giving. It helps us to overcome the obstacles. Mm, because the obstacle, overcome. The obstacles were that they were in poverty. Yes. Obstacle also was that they were dealing with pressure. And I say yes, this to you, yes, as yes, you give, yes, as yes. you uh, move in your financial yes. stewardship of the Lord, mm. you're going to have to overcome obstacles. Yes. Those obstacles could be a number of things. In the text, the obstacles that they dealt with were external pressure yeah. and also abject poverty. They didn't have much. But let me tell you yeah, what I yeah. see. They yeah. optimize the opportunity. They did, And what Pastor. we have to yeah. do, when grace is at yeah. work, yeah. we optimize the yeah. opportunity. Yeah. It, it, We're opt driven by grace. Exactly. We, we are literally respondents. Hence, we respond to the power of grace that's operative in our lives. And that response is oftentimes seen in the attitude. Because, no because doubt. what we look at in the no text, doubt. if you watch the text, they didn't have... They didn't have a grudging attitude. They did not cheerfully. According to the scripture, yeah. according to the scripture, it says, it says, abundance of joy. Now, mm. if we understand joy, yeah. joy is not based yeah. upon yeah. what's happening. Yeah. Yes. Because yes. if it was based upon what's happening, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
They would be some, but they would be some. Yeah, yeah. But joy, we often say, yeah. is based upon who is within us yes. and how he's working yes. within us. And yes. you just shared with yes. us that when he's in us, the yes. grace of God has been yes. poured in us. Yes. It should, there should be an outflow, yes. a result that is quite evident yeah. to everyone else. So, so what I see is that there is this overcoming of the, of yeah. the obstacles. And I say that emphatically because what that says, mm. it removes excuses. Pastor, grace literally shatters the status quo. Correct. The status quo is, Pastor, I'm going through tough times mm -hmm. and excusably, I retained what I have for myself. Yeah. Right. Right. But, but grace is, lest we forget, is awkward. It's yeah. unorthodox because yeah. it shatters the status quo. You cannot embrace grace, Pastor, and not be generous. Right. You cannot embrace grace and not be a giver. Matter my, my of fact, Pastor, we talked about this. You and I grew up mm -hmm. acclimated to the spirit of giving mm -hmm. in the church. I remember as a boy in the Second Baptist Church, of course, we were crusaders. Yeah. I can remember, Pastor, giving because we were too under assessment. Yeah, yeah. Crusader Department assessed five dollars, mm -hmm. and literally, we took pride mm -hmm. in giving to the church. And I think, Pastor, what has happened over several years now, mm -hmm. there's been so much propaganda mm -hmm. about giving, and some of it is not propaganda. Some of it is reported as truth. Yeah. Yes. There are those erroneously who mishandle the offerings. But pastor, here, here's the point. The point is God has provided right. grace so that we might be dynamic in our giving, in our offerings, in our generosity. And, and the word to me, dynamic, <clears throat> matches this idea of difficulty. Yes. How am I, how do I be dynamic in my mm, giving? Yes. When my life is fraught with difficulties. Mm. And, and again, giving based upon what the apostle Paul yes. teaches, in this passage, he leaves us a lesson that all of our giving and every time we give will not be based upon things going well in our life. Yes. It will not be based yeah. upon us having an overabundance. Yeah. Yeah of resource, yeah. but we ought to have an overabundance of rejoice. Pastor, you said something uh, uh, the other Sunday I want you to, to elaborate on because many times we, we literally shrink back perhaps from our blessings by not giving. Mm -hmm. but, but you talked about the very fact that some of us think that our gifts take the place of our giving, right. our talents right. take the place of our giving. Some of us think that if I give a little time, I don't have to give monetarily. Right. Pastor, speak on that because I think there are so many people who are bound by that spirit. And, and I think that's important because as you read on through the text, Paul talked yeah. about how they, the Corinthians were blessed with a bunch of yes. gifts. Yes. They, they had knowledge, they had yes. understanding and all of these other things going on. But in essence, he's saying that still does not excuse you yes. from giving financially. Yes. And I, say, I want to say yes. this in a practical way. Beloved, it's important for you to give up your time. It is, it yes. is important yes. for you to use the talent or the talents God has given you. All of that is important. <clears throat> it's important to help people. Mm. It, is, it is important... To, to make a difference mm. in the community. It's important to make a difference in society. But the Bible teaches emphatically clear that there is, that does not excuse us yes. from the physical, tangible responsibility mm. of giving our resources. Now, if we're talking about grace, yes. my gift may be a gift of grace. Yes. You, you may not have an overabundance. But if you keep reading in this text, they gave of their own ability. And that is where I want you to see mm. what it means to optimize the opportunity. Yes. yes. Optimizing the opportunity is not based upon how big my gift yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. It's not based yeah. on it's not based upon yeah. how grand my yeah. my, my yeah. gift is. Yeah. It's it's about how graced my how gift grace. is. How grace. Pastor, they didn't only give according to their means, right? Our ability, they gave beyond, beyond their ability. Their ability. So that would suggest that it was not what they had. Yes. They could, because they didn't have much they according didn't have to the much. text. But whatever they had, yes. they gave that. And I think when we understand beyond their ability, mm. if we look at what we see them having the ability to do, we may see them having the ability to give this or that, but they gave this and that and gave beyond yeah. that. So yeah. they gave beyond yeah. their yeah. ability. Yeah. But I think there is something communal and collective mm. in that too. Yeah. Because as they collectively mm. came together. Mm. And Pastor, this is a principle, I yeah. think, that's helpful for the African-American yeah. community. Just yeah. from a business yeah. perspective. Yes. If there's a business opportunity, mm -hmm. I, I want to I relate this mm -hmm. to what happens when there is a communal and collective, yeah. collaborative effort yeah. Yeah. in giving. Yeah. If there is a business opportunity, and that business opportunity is X amount of dollars, mm -hmm. I don't have it yeah. by myself. Yeah. But if you and I come together yes. and we, we pool our resources together, yeah, yeah. that business opportunity no longer remains yeah, on the table, yeah. but it becomes an opportunity. Yes. We optimize the opportunity yes. Yes. because we come together yeah. and we contribute yeah. to get the business. Now, yeah. imagine that concept yeah. Yeah. and that mindset operating yeah. in the kingdom within the church. If you contribute what you're able to contribute yeah, yeah. according to your ability, yeah. if I contribute what I'm able to contribute yeah. according to my ability, yeah. and all of us are doing this collectively, yeah. and we collectively pool our resources yeah. together, we can do more for the kingdom yeah. collectively yeah. together in a communal setting yeah. than we can by ourselves. Yeah. So when it, it says they gave according to their yeah. not just one or two, but yeah. their, yeah. so yeah. I think there was a collective yeah communal yeah. reality yeah. that when we understand grace, yeah. it should bring us together in community. And pastor, even to expand and extend, they, they were not thinking of themselves right. as they were thinking about the saints in Jerusalem and economically relieving the oppressed. Now, that's critical, pastor. When you think about it, they were not thinking about themselves. So what it says is, in order to be altruistic, one has to be selfless. Yeah. And that's a challenge in our generation where literally I seek in consumerism, not just perhaps in the deposit, right. but consumerism. I am literally overwhelmed right. by debt because everything in pursuit of fashion, food, and mm -hmm. fan, all of that, I forget about the saints in Jerusalem. Right. Think about this, Pastor. You and I can do more together. Mm -hmm. We can do more together. I believe the Macedonians, and of course I believe Paul is literally exhorting the Corinthians yeah. to be in fellowship, fellowship. To, to be in partnership. Mm -hmm. And of course, koinonia, Greek, means fellowship, yeah. and it has, it, it's connotation from the marketplace. Yeah, yeah. It's the marketplace. You and I going in business together. We are partners now. We're business partners. I think in the kingdom, I think the kingdom will become most dynamic yeah. when we begin to see this as quantania, as fellowship, as partnership. But, but you said something yeah. too that I think yeah. should resonate with the contemporary listener. Yes. There is nothing wrong with fun. At all. Th there is nothing wrong with fashion. <clears throat> At all. All of that is fine, but it should not diminish your faith. Yes. So if I want to, if I want to buy something fashionable, yes. it's okay. Yes. If I want to have fun, yes. it's okay. Yes. But when my when my financial faith life suffers, mm. I think that's the problem. Yes. Because, because if I am a mm. recipient of grace, mm. I've got to see my faith. Mm. Not equal to my fun, yes. not equal to my yes. fashion, but it supersedes my fun. It and supersedes. My so so that means it should be number one. It should be number one. Right. And it puts another spin, Pastor, on the abundant life. What does the abundant life right. look like in living color? Because mm -hmm. when we think of abundance, we think in the material. Yeah. 
Here are the Macedonians, I believe, living the abundant life. They have abundant joy. Yeah. And hence, it flows over in the wealth of their generosity. And you and I know they don't have much. So notice, notice you said that abundance, yes. that, that, that life, it, it flows in their joy. Yes. And it flows in their wealth y yes. of giving. Of giving. Not their wealth of getting. Yes, but giving. But giving. And, and I think that we have misguided the perspective <clears throat> of what the abundant life yes, looks like. Yes. Now, this does not mean that God does not want us to have. At I, all. I think At I, all. I'm, I'm certain. Yeah. Prosperity is his plan okay. for us. It's yeah. okay. It's okay. Yeah. But, I, but I also think prosperity yeah. looks like this as yes. well. Yes. If, if, if this abundant life, yeah. the outflow is joy, mm. the outflow mm. is a wealth of giving. Yeah. If we're going to talk Biblically, mm. about abundant life, we can't just think about God wants me to have this abundant life, yes. and it's all about what God gives me. Yes. But the abundant life also is about reciprocity. If that's the yes. case, it's what I give to God. Yeah. I can never compete with Him. Never. I can never compare this. But gift. Pastor, Pastor, think about the sage who would say, he he or she who lends or gives to the poor. Lends to the Lord. Yeah, yeah. And he will repay. You talk about reciprocity. Right. That's the law of reciprocity. He will repay. And in the text, it is clear that this is based upon yeah. the relationship yes. with the Lord. Yes. It, the relationship yeah. with the Lord affects how I deal with everybody yes. else. Yes. They're giving first to God. Yes. Then they gave themselves yes. to Paul. Then yeah. they gave themselves yeah. to the poor saints in Jerusalem. Yeah. It first starts yeah. with a right relationship with mm. God. So the question that mm. must be raised is, when I, when I look at how I mm. give yes. to the work of the kingdom, mm. when I look at how I give to the work, and, and, and Pastor, yeah. notice yeah. Paul is talking to believers. Believers, yes. Only believers yes. can conceptualize yes. this. Yes. this this is, this is yeah. not to un yeah. unbelieve. This yeah. is to believers. Yeah. He talks about this in a way that mm. suggests that as a believer, if your life is handed over to yeah. God, everything else about your life, mm. it shows up yeah. in that relationship. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I say that sincerely because mm. I think we live in a time where there are so many people who in the contemporary yeah. church they think if I if I do enough community service, mm. that's yeah. enough. Yeah. Or um, I don't I don't really have to give because they're going to do it. They're going to yeah, do it. Yeah. And people are assuming yeah. everybody. But yeah. this right here yeah. says I take responsibility yeah. of how God has graced my life. Yes. And I now become yeah. a part of the participatory yeah. practice of being a blessing yeah. to others. Pastor, think about their desperation. Right. <laughs> They literally begged they to did. give. It was not coercion, no compulsion. They volunteered. Here's what we've discovered in church. You and I have been in church long enough to know this. A dangerous person is one, potentially, mm -hmm. who has a donation to the church without a dedication to God. Yeah. Because yeah. here's what happens, Pastor. If I donate, if I give to the church without being dedicated to God, then I'm going to disagree with what you're doing as a leader, mm -hmm. hence I don't agree with your vision, and guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to stop giving because my donation is literally premised on my delight in leadership. Yeah. Hence, not only my delight, but my approval. As a result, there's so many people who retained, literally hold their future in their hand. Because they believe, but, but you know, we go back to that passage in Luke where... There are the minnows that were, the minnows mm -hmm. that were given, and it was put in a handkerchief. Yes, some people have their future in a handkerchief mm. because they believe yes. that they have a certain level of control. Yes, and what you said is that says to me that until a person mm. has given themselves to God, yes, if I have not given myself, mm. and I think that's what <clears throat> we don't like to talk about or deal yes. with. Yes, because. People have been in church so long, yes. we just assume yes. they've given themselves to God. Yes. But if a person mm. has truly given themselves yes. to God, 
you can't you can't get mad mm. and stop giving. Yeah. You can't get mad and hold your resources because then mm. it starts to say you believe number one you own it that yeah. is yours. Yes. Now you've shifted the narrative yes. of what true biblical stewardship yes. is all about. Yeah. But also it says that you believe mm. that what you're doing mm. is actually right when yes. it is categorically wrong according yes. to the text. Yes. So if the grace of God is really at yeah. work in my life, yeah. I don't get mad and mm. hold my hold my gift yeah. because that means that I'm I'm attempting to hurt yes. or show or prove to you yes. that that I can keep something. Yes. But if we understand kingdom principles, mm. God is always going to do what He does. Always, and it hurts the person who calls themselves yeah. holding on yeah. to it. Yeah. It hurts them yeah. more than it hurts the church, more yeah. than it hurts the kingdom. Yeah. It puts them in a precarious predicament, and yeah. it also counters. Yeah. what the grace of God yeah. looks like yeah. when it is truly in your life. Yeah. Pastor, when it's truly in your life, has it dominates you. Yeah. Grace literally is everywhere. Yeah. The domain of grace is, it dominates you. Yeah. Matter of fact, grace empowers us to do that which we are literally called to do and to do it excellently. Yeah. Hence, dumbfounding, carnal, unspiritual minded people. Here's what, here's what carnality was saying. I ain't giving all my money to, to the church. Well, here's the point. It is indicative that you've not given all of yourself to God. Oh, yeah. Because when you give yourself to God, yeah. believe me, beloved, it makes all the difference in the world. Prosperity then becomes a matter of sacred purposefulness. It is prosperity, Pastor, with an assignment. Yeah. It's resources with an assignment. The question is, God, who do you want me to bless? Yeah. God, wh where do you want me to give this offering? Mm -hmm. Because now I am so vulnerable to God. Mm -hmm. I just need to hear yeah. God's voice. I'm that vulnerable to God, Pastor. I don't put, here's, here's what Jesus says, well, where your treasure is, he says, that, that's where your heart is, right? I, I want God to be my treasure because yeah. God is my heart. God is not just in my heart. Yeah. God is my heart. And that's what I want to close yeah. with this evening. Where is your heart? Yes. As it relates to this stewardship of giving, <clears throat> and we understand that God has extended grace, yes. and that grace <clears throat> has overflowed in our lives so much so that we give ourselves to God, not only do we give ourselves to God, but we now participate in God's work. <coughs> my, my question to yeah. you, are you overcoming mm. obstacles and optimizing yes. your opportunities? Yes. <coughs> if you are doing that, you are evidencing the mm. grace of God being at mm. work in your life. Yes. And I am convinced if we ever understand the principle of the stewardship of giving mm. based upon the grace of God. Mm. No one will hinder us mm. or nothing will hinder us yes. from our heart being in God and God being our heart. Yes. Let's go to God yes. in prayer. Grace mm. is God, we say thank you. Thank you, God, for mm. this opportunity to share God, we say your you. word. Thank you, God, mm. for how the scriptures speak to us, challenge us, how the scriptures change us, transform us, God, to walk in a way that's pleasing to you and in a way that's mm. aligned with your word and with your will. God, I pray now mm. that as we come to the end of this study that we would take this word and apply it to our lives and allow this word to empower and enrich us so that we would be more engaged in the work mm. of kingdom building in a financial way that would cause glory and bring glory mm. to your name. It's in mm. the name of Jesus we pray. And every child of God said, amen. amen. If you would like to connect with us here at the New Mount Island Baptist Church, we would love to have you as a part of what God is doing. <clears throat> You're welcome to join us. If you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, his grace can be mm. poured into your life. He will save you. He will save you if you ask him to forgive you of your sins, forgive you of your sins, receive him into your heart, 
Let him be Lord and Savior of your life. Yeah. You will yeah. experience the yeah. transforming power of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Perhaps in this life you have experienced some challenging moments and it caused you to, to throw in the towel, throw your hands up, give up on God. But God says today he's a God of another chance. If you will simply trust him, simply lean to him, return to him, he'll give you a new start. Or if you're looking for a church, regardless of your geographical location, we would love to have you as a part of what God is doing here at the New Mount Island Baptist Church. On the screen, you can see the multiple ways as to how you can connect and be a part of what God is doing here at the New Mount Island Baptist Church. And after hearing this word that we shared this mm -hmm. evening, mm -hmm. if the Lord is prompting your heart to give on the mm -hmm. screen, there are multiple ways that you too can participate in the work mm -hmm. of what the Lord is doing here at the New Mount Olive Baptist Church, and he's doing a great work. We're doing work here, yeah, and we're yeah. doing work abroad. Yeah, we're changing yeah. lives both here and abroad, mm. and you too can be a part mm. of that life-changing work that God is doing through us here at the New Mount Olive Baptist Church. Again, thank you so much mm. for joining us. We love you, and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. God bless you, Pastor. God bless you.